and welcome to Nerd Talk. I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Pyrosim. And you're listening to us ostensibly pseudo live on WLRA 88.1 FM, the start in Lewis University in Romeoville. Quasi live. Live ish. Undead. Brian. We'll go with that. You're sure. listening to us undead on WLRA. <laughs> yeah, so I've, got, I've got nothing to add to that. All right. Uh, yeah. So, Sen, you have a rant. We're going to leap into it. Okay, so. Huge League of Legends update, like enormous, as in the Proving Grounds is no longer the Proving Grounds. It's now just officially named Murder Bridge? No, it is now the Howling Abyss. Ah. Uh, Riot has gone ahead and just blown this out of the water with their big uh, upcoming summer patch, which actually is Frost-themed. Brilliant! This is the one where Trundle stops being so gross and weird. Yes. So, Trundle is no longer, like, a disgusting rot troll. Um, on the same note, Sejuani is no longer stupid. For... Yeah, miss, miss, I'm gonna run around the trun- the frozen tundra in a fur-lined bikini. That yep. makes a whole lot of sense. Yep, she has decided to put on some dang armor and has traded up for a much meaner-looking pig. Also so, yeah, pants! Pig. Yep, now wearing pants like full armor, Sejuani is now decked Sejuani, out. Pants Edition. Edition. Of if course, you if you've got the old ver- if you've got the old version of Sejuani or you had her before this patch rolled out, uh, you get a skin that's you know a classic look. Uh, likewise, her secondary skin um, I forget the name of it. Give me just a second. I'll look this up. Uh, Sejuani's second skin is still a pantsless skin. She's the one who can break through all of the barriers that exist in the game, right? Yes, her pig smashes through all walls. Angry pig smash. The, uh, the Saber Tusk Sejuani is still clothed rather questionably, although, albeit more clothing than the previous classic version was wearing. So uh, if Murder Bridge has a name now, does this mean there's matchmaking for it? Yes, there is now matchmaking on Murder Bridge for ARAM. ARAM is now an official game mode. Yes. I, I like ARAM, but it was basically impossible to play for me without matchmaking before. Yeah, the... Well, For those of I you listening agree. at home, ARAM means all random, all mid. So everybody's champions are assigned at random, and everybody runs up the center lane. <laughs> well, with the actual officialization of this mode, they've, uh, to help stem the number of people who are going to dodge if they just don't get a champion they like, uh, one of the things Riot has done is they've uh, implemented the Punk Buster system for, or sorry, the Leave Buster system. Punk Buster is what, uh, Man, I can't even remember what used that old system. But uh, anyway, the the lever buster that Riot uses basically penalizes you for leaving those games. It it puts a uh, a rising clock on the amount of time before you can join another one. But you can also earn rerolls, which is kind of cool. Um, so these are one shot items that you earn from just playing games that you can use to reroll your champion if you don't like who you got. Uh, you earn more of them for just playing games. It's not like you have to buy them or anything. Possibly? The logo for Punk Buster is the most incredibly old-fashioned thing that I've ever seen. It looks like it's right out of the 80s. Uh, looks like it's in a bunch of games, probably the most notable being Call of Duty 4. Yeah, for some reason it's on my computer, and I don't know what game would have put it there. I do not have anything on that list. Oh well, not important. Moving on. So, there's ARAM matchmaking. Are there other formats, like selected champions? One more time, Pyro. Pyro. Uh, what? One more time, what you previously said. So there's matchmaking for ARAM. Is there matchmaking for other formats, like draft pick champions and blind pick? Yeah, yeah. There, there's always been matchmaking for that. Um, you've always... Not on Murder Bridge, there hasn't. Oh, in other words, can you do those on Murder Bridge? No. Uh, Murder Bridge currently only supports all random, all mid. Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah, that said, you can still use it for custom maps if you want to do that. Uh-huh. And I've got people on my friends list inviting me to games right now. Sorry, guys, I'm doing a show. So this all seems like good stuff. Yes, this this has been a fantastic update. Um, in addition to the two character reworks and the uh, officialization of the Murder Bridge, we also have a new champion, because that's a thing. Hey! Uh, Lissandra, the Ice Witch, has been thrown into the game. and And she's fully armored! She's not only fully armored, she's insanely dangerous. Like, ridiculously dangerous. I was just actually, earlier yesterday, giving a presentation on uh, League of Legends online marketing strategy. Because I'm a nerd. Welcome to the show. And, uh, yeah, one one of the things is that 90% of the current players are 
dudes and something ought to be done about that. We should fix this somehow. Um, yes, one of Lysandra's two skins has her fully armored head to toe with only her uh, ghostly arms and her face showing. Uh, the other is kind of a more classic fantasy mage outfit. Although she's still wearing the same headpiece. She's pretty cool looking. She there was is definitely some point at which the Riot Art team switched out their staff and got some way better people on. It's and pretty much when Iron Stylus took over, as I understand it. This is definitely part of the new generation. Yes. And likewise, they are going back and updating all of those old champs to meet the new League of Legends style. So rather than putting out a League of Legends 2.0, they just went, yeah, we can go back and update these characters that people already love and already own, and we're going to keep making money that way. Because, like, I gotta say, looking at Trundle, I would actually play that now. Although that said, all of Trundle's other skins still look dumb. Is Trundle competitive? Like, does he play well? He can be. Um, it takes a really good player to run Trundle properly. But yeah, I, I've seen a Trundle completely wreck face. Um, that said, Riot, you are cruel beyond belief because you went ahead and released a skin for the my, uh, one of my absolute favorite characters on the same day. Uh, Shivana received a new skin, the Ice Drake Shivana that had been a forum suggestion for some time, as well as uh, Anivia got her legendary finally, the Black Ice Anivia skin, which looks amazing in-game. Nice. So I have a proposal yeah, it... for community improvement in League of Legends. And what would that be? I say that... Anytime anybody types the word report, just that substring at all in any message in chat, uh, their account gets insta-banned permanently. Well, that's um, one thought. I don't know. Sometimes there are legit requests to report people, although yeah. requesting that the enemy team report someone does not carry any weight whatsoever. I feel like offenses that, are, that warrant reporting ought to be somewhat apparent without somebody needing to tell other people to do that reporting. And, and the occasions like, for reporting someone typically aren't going to be found in chat. Like, I gotta say, the, the number of times I've legitimately felt the need to report someone for gameplay behavior has never been because someone on the enemy team claimed that someone on their team was feeding. Like, intentionally. That has never happened. Not not once. I am... Um, well, I mean, I've had, you know, people say mean things in chat, like... Yeah, verbal things in chat are fine, but the other team can't report for those. Or mm. shouldn't be. Like, say mean things in chat, it's not when your own team reports you because they're the ones who can see it. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like taking such an absolutist stand on that would... May, maybe uh, I'm I, being a bit naive about this, but... If the I idea of knock off game, the crap language or you'll get reported doesn't carry any weight, is what you're saying? Yeah, I, I don't have to tell someone that in chat. I can ignore that person then report them after the game. I'm pretty sure they're going to keep saying whatever horrendous things they were saying, even after I block them. <clears throat> My theory is that if somebody is behaving badly, then the other people around that person should all independently be able to come to the conclusion uh, without that person ever needing to be harassed with the language report, I'm going to report you. Uh, which actually, the most of the usage of the word report I have seen in League Chat has been people saying to uh, perhaps less skilled players or people who are not actually exhibiting bad behavior, uh, but maybe merely inept behavior, if even that. Right, uh, which people... Harassment of, I am going to report you, everybody report this nub. Which those people don't get actually punished by the tribunal. They don't. Absolutely not. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's not effective as harassment and doesn't make the game less desirable to play. Right. Absolutely. Whereas if somebody is just spewing racial <clears throat> slurs, like, uh, <clears throat> me and two pugs can probably realize that this is a reportable offense uh, without us having to communicate and I organize the fact that we're going to report this person. We can independently come to that. Right. Ow. I, I've purposely thrown games in the past because of some of the things being said by my teammates, like, um, I don't know if I should share this anecdote, Pyro, feel free to cut this if you don't want to, uh, but uh, I, I once had a self-proclaimed Nazi in one of my games. I was a little bit horrified by the prospect that someone would decide to make that proclamation about themselves, <clears throat> and so the remaining three players on the team and, and myself just kind of decided to let that one ride until the 20-minute mark and go ahead and surrender that one. Like, we, we really don't want to see this horrible person who's spitting ethnic slurs like they're, you know, a standard article of the English language. So we're just going to go ahead and let the enemy have this one. 
seems <clears throat> legitimate. Yeah, I, I found that to be the proper decision in, in that uh, moment. So you said you had a rant. That wasn't so much a rant as patch notes, and the patch theme is pretty well, cool. Well, my complaint is that, geez, right, go ahead and just put out everything I want at once. Like, you give me a new skin for one of my favorite champs, you fix a map that I utterly love playing, you release a champion that her, admitted her second skin is so cool and her design is so great that I had to buy her day one. Like, thanks. Thanks for just pulling that 20 bucks out of my wallet. You guys are great. <laughs> so this <clears throat> company who makes a game you like made some more content that you like and you bought and it totally and now you're mad? Money for it. Well, I'm just reminded that, you know, EA, you could do this too sometime. You, you don't have to, like, nickel and dime me when the game comes out. You, you can give me stuff that I want and I'll hand you my money freely. I promise, right? Or at Games knows this is a fact. They have never asked for money from me, yet I have freely given it to them on multiple occasions for stuff that I want. Other game companies could take note of this. I like that this is the most first world problem ever. Yep. I'll, I'll put this Completely. right next to my complaint of I have this paycheck that's been in my backpack for like a week. And it's not cashing been able itself? I to get to the bank to deposit it. It's like, oh no, my life is so hard. Right. I need to you're go to the bank to deposit my paycheck. And in the meantime, you're still well-fed and capable of buying the things you want, even with that money rendered to paper form? Yep. Well, to non-spendable paper hard. form. So yeah, um, one more thing I want to mention about this patch. Uh, with it, they're doing the big event, the, what is it, the War of the Freland? And that's the, the region of the game where this is occurring. And one of the things that goes along with it is you get to pick a side in the conflict. So you can align yourself with Ash and her clan of Frosty Elves. You can align yourself with Sejuani and her very warlike, angry barbarian friends. Or you can align yourself with Lysandra and her mysterious, creepy ice folks. By doing There's no fire option in this war. Well, in order to do this, you are picking the summoner icon that you're going to be using for your first ten wins of the season. And upon winning ten games, you permanently unlock that icon in an upgraded form. Oh man, I really like this. So this is like a big meta game, and they're keeping stats on which factions are doing best. Yes, they are. So when you go, when you drop into game, you set your summoner icon to one of the three factions. Then uh, you keep that until you win ten games, at which point you permanently unlock that faction's icon. Now, if you switch your icon at any point during those ten wins, you're going to end up losing your progress. Uh huh. Towards the the final icon. <clears throat> Likewise, if you unlock your faction's icon and then switch it to one of the other factions and win 10 games, your icon goes away, because you're a faction-jumping jerk. <clears throat> so yes, Riot's it keeping track of all this, and supposedly they're going to modify the lore to match whoever wins this thing. Yeah, and that's kind of a thing that they've done many times with the universe, like, um, the Ionian Treads are yep. named because of a tournament, right? Yeah, I forget what the item that they were going to unlock for the Noxians if they had won that match. I think it was a DPS item. But uh, the Ionians designed a pair of boots that lowered cooldown, <clears throat> which actually are in the game. I think it is pretty sweet how dynamic the universe is according to actual events in the community. Right. I, I kind of wish they were still publishing the, uh, what is it, the Summoner's Journal. I, I wish they were still doing that in a way, but that has, like, ceased entirely so that they can work on better... Uh, lore for their champions. Right. Which I'm okay with. I I don't need story progression to basically just tell me that, hey, um, this skin is coming out. Yay. Because that's exactly what they did for Tyrant Swain. The story progression <clears throat> in the League of Legends world is kind of like, hey, there's all these factions, and they all hate each other. Yeah. They're all fighting, but none of them die. My thing that I'm really questioning is, uh, you guys seem to have collected the most dangerous group of people in the universe in this one place to fight each other endlessly. In other words, to get better at fighting endlessly. Uh, are you sure that's a good idea? So you're expecting that League is going to, like, totally take a left turn where the champions are going to overpower the summoners, band together, and just abandon their nations, and... I'm just saying, some of the like champions some have killed game. summoners. It's turn into an uh, MMO. looking at Nocturne there, uh, and Fiddlesticks. Like, the you're only controlling no these people because they're they, agreeing they to it. Oh, yeah, we There's also have one other new skin. I, I forgot. There's a new Volibar skin. The Runeguard Volibar. Like, this is a huge oh, patch. Absolutely amazing what they've done. I want more events like this, Riot. You, you did it right. This is exactly how you do it. I would go to the Volibar to get drunk after a con. 
I, I want them to do this of ev- uh, these kind of events like maybe twice a year. Oh man, that would make an awesome like beer garden name at like a con. Yeah, yeah you do it. You do it like the Privateer Press, uh, redecorating the Ram style. Yes, exactly. Yeah, unfortunately, Riot doesn't go to Gen Con. Riot's big events are PAX and uh, and. Uh, they E3 should go to Gen Con. There's so many freaking LOL cosplayers. It's true. They they could probably have a good time there. And likewise, I want some of those con exclusive skins. Yes. Oh man. All right. Here's the plan. We all murder somebody who has a cardboard tube Samurai Jack skin, and we claim their accounts for our own. Actually, I'm just going on eBay right now to see if anyone is selling them. Is it actually possible to transfer things on the black market like that, or do you have to give away account passwords and stuff? No. To give away the the Jack skin, all you would have to do is give the code from the card that you received at the convention. Although oh, Pax an unredeemed Jack- one. Yeah, Pax Jacks may in fact be so old that... Just no one has a code for it anymore. I figure that's true. That's the most prestigious one I think of. Yeah, I I have no question of that. That is the skin that everyone likes. Um, let's see, there's... There claims to be one for 50 bucks. 50 bucks? That's not bad. I've got some 40s, too. Well, my other gripe with League of Legends is that it's not possible to sort of buy everything. Like, I kind of have no problem with free-to-play games, uh, but I wish there was a way to top out to be like okay like i'm just really into this here is a large upfront sum of money and i just want to know that whatever i want is here there's no option for that like even like the hundred dollar uh, lots of bonus rp rp package does not get you a significant percentage of the champions like you will still be a majority short if you start a new new account and put a hundred dollars into it but they do sell the starter pack at most retail stores that you can pick up, which contains, like, five of the lower-level champions and skins for them. Oh, I didn't know that existed. Is that is a thing. to get that digitally? Uh, let me check. Well, I don't want to check, actually, because then I'd have to throw open League again, which might do horrible things to my connection. That's probably best not to. Uh, I understand that they do still have bundles in the game. I just haven't looked at them in some time. Yeah, I think they come and go along with everything else that Riot does. You just have to catch them at the right time. No, there, there are some semi-permanent bundles, and they're not expensive. Uh, you're gonna make me pop this open and look it up. Alright, I apologize if my, uh, if I become difficult to hear. That's fine. We'll, we'll just sit back for a minute. Give me ten seconds. So yeah, the big so, League of Legends thing, super happy about it. Um, Lissandra does the voiceover for the new Splash animation as you're logging in and proves that she's crazy and rather frigid, as one would probably expect. I All need right. to add an option just to change your login screen music to the Vi theme all the time. Sup- supposedly they have talked. Exactly. They've been talking about adding a system wherein you can pick your splash screen. That would and be pretty great. The, yeah, one of the options would be that you can pick the uh, pick one the of the old songs. New champions splashes. Okay, so I'm in the game, and there are currently three bundles that are available. There are the champions bundles, which is three thousand four hundred RP the Digital Collector's Pack, and the Gamer's Choice Pack. And these all contain various bonuses, runes, champions, and skins. I believe, if I'm correct, the Digital Collector's Pack is the only way to unlock the Goth Annie skin. Was it, like, the only way ever, or was it an old one that this is now Legacy? No, it's the only... I have some very... It has always been only the way to unlock that skin. Uh, Likewise, uh, Huntress Sivir is uh, available through the Gamer's Choice Pack. Uh, that makes those skins especially like a weird badge of honor of I spent a lot of money in one lump. I mean, I guess all of the skins are I spent some money, but this one is like I spent more money than usual. I spent so much money. Um, yeah, it's 4,000 RP, which translates to, uh, like 30 bucks? Yeah. How much is that in Microsoft points? Uh, I don't want to do the math for that. I really don't. Okay, now what if I was buying the Microsoft <clears throat> I believe there's a website that actually converts points. Ugh. Ugh, and ugh again. I believe somebody made a thing. Nope. Did any of us actually play Deponia? I did. Are we going into reviews? Yes. Well, <clears throat> you are the only one who played Deponia, so... Yeah, really? You I saw you fired up for like ten minutes. I put like an hour into it. There you go. Much, much less than the 20 <clears throat> hours that I put into Don't Starve. All right, so I'll do the Jesus. Deponia. Yep. All right, so Deponia. Yeah, it's by Daedric Games. Those people who somehow escaped Skyrim. Oh, wait, no, that's not right. They just decided to use the name of the race of demon entities from Skyrim for some reason. 
I don't know. Surely do we... that's older than Bethesda. I don't think it is, sir. Uh, quick Googling does not seem to suggest that it is. That, no, that, ter- that term is not, in fact, owned by Bethesda? Yep, everything here is Elder Scrolls links. Yeah. Okay, what a bunch of ripoffs. Jerks. But yeah, um, so Deponia, it's a classic 2D uh, adventure game. Like, it, I felt like I was playing Monkey Island. That, that's the best way I can put it. I felt like I was playing Monkey Island, captained by Philip J. Fry. It is very pretty, and very, very silly. Yeah, the- Futurama is a good tone comparison. The, the animation is gorgeous. Um, there are some flaws with the lip syncing, but that's just because of the animation budget. But that shouldn't impair you from playing the game in any way. Like, all of the major animated sequences are very well done. There's a sequence early on in the game where the main character uh, is dragged over most of the junk of the planet, and it looks like a, uh, a mainstream cartoon. Like, I... I can't speak highly enough of the animation style in this game and then the amount of humor that is brought with it. That said, the characters are very broad stereotypes. Um, the main character, Rufus, is, as we've said, a very generic comparison to Fry from Futurama in that he is rather idiotic, hopelessly bad at everything, and yet people still, for some reason, enjoy this person's company enough to not throw him out including his ex-girlfriend who he is living with, even though at times it distinctly seems like she wishes this person was dead. Yeah, not throwing him out is like a weird line there, because she did install a guillotine in one of the doors in the house in order to attempt to kill him. Or, you know, just kill him if he tried to go through this door. Which is a subtle distinction, I suppose. Yeah, like, I I don't get a lot of the characters' motivations besides, hey, we're setting up an adventure game for you. Like... I live in a junkyard, why? and I don't want to live in a junkyard anymore. I, well, I understand that one. I understand Rufus, but I don't understand why people are reacting to Rufus the way they are. They're like, everyone puts up with him despite the fact that this person has proven he is incompetent and a terrible person. Um, it, it definitely runs off of the standard adventure game logic of, hey, click on stuff and combine stuff until it works. Like, there, there's so no penalty like for getting it wrong. had a fancy hint system where it would display everything on the screen that you could click on. Yeah, and and I appreciate that. That that is nice compared to the let's search the environment for things we can click. Click all the things. Well, let let me go over one of the earliest puzzles in the game that you have to solve. See, Rufus wants clean socks for his trip. Okay. In order to get clean socks, you have to look around uh Tony, his ex-girlfriend's house where he has been living. I have to look around Tony's uh house for a yellow sock a blue sock, and a green sock. Why do we need three different colors of socks? You've already lost me. I know. This because is... Rufus is so inept that he does not own two matched pairs of socks. Right. So I mean, you, you don't necessarily know that this is what you're looking for, but you're pixel hunting around and you're clicking on everything you can, and this is what you wind up with. You're right. like, why do I have these three socks? So what you have to do to get your clean socks is then you take a pot out of the sink, fill it with water, use a blowtorch to light the stove... And for uh, for fuel, you're using five notes that Tony left you of increasing anger at your behavior and lighting the stove with them. You then put the pot on the stove's hot plate and add detergent to the water. You then throw all three socks in the water and then stir it with a fork that you found upstairs. At which point, what you get is two green socks that come out of the hot water bath. I'm unclear on what happened to the third sock. I think the game was, too. <laughs> you know, whatever. So, yeah, you, you can't tell me that isn't adventure game logic right there. If you have to do exactly what the creators thought you should be doing, or you make no progress. Oh, this is that... very much a, an adventure game. That sounds super janky. Yes. It, it definitely is. It's a is. genre. Like, that, it's, it's off-putting to certain people. So what you're saying is that the genre be. overall is janky? Yes. I think people. Oh, I'm glad we clarified that. Adventure games have died that out. Crazy reasoning, and I derive a certain amount of enjoyment from it. Yeah, uh, one like, of my favorite games ever is The Longest Journey, which is a bit of a more serious adventure game than this. Uh, but definitely more serious. Has a puzzle where you get a rubber ducky out of the polluted river in your town, and then put a bandaid over a hole in it and inflate it, and then use this rubber ducky on uh, like a cane in order to get it iron key out of some electrified train tracks without zapping yourself. I don't know. I, so. I, I did enjoy what became of these socks uh, later in the game. What you ended up actually using them for. I didn't get that far. 
You use the socks to prevent a mechanical repair arm from retracting into its uh, crevice. You basically jam the door with it so that when the arm would retract, it just stops moving and you can rip the arm off before it can go back in the hole. <laughs> nice. Does anything ever come of that bolt cutter? Because, okay, let me set this up. At the very beginning of the game, uh, Rufus is like, okay, I'm going to leave home. This is what I'm doing. I have a checklist of things I need. I need socks. I need <clears> snacks. <throat> And something else. Uh, and it's also got a bolt cutters on it. His toothbrush uh, was the like, other item. I mean, his toothbrush. Which right. runs away from him. His toothbrush, which runs away because he's so filthy. You, you can't go on a like hiking trip without an animate toothbrush and some bolt cutters. I mean, All right, so I don't know what kind of hiking trips you're taking. So if you played five minutes beyond the, uh, I, the I finding got, of I the socks. To, let, me, let me set this oh, up more. Okay. And Rufus is like... Why are there bolt cutters on this list? Like, this packing list does not make any sense. And so you go around and you get all this stuff. You're just adventuring in your house at the very beginning. And you get to the point where you've collected all the items on the list and you've crossed them all off. And you're trying to stuff them into your suitcase. And you're like, alright, I've stuffed my socks and my, and my snacks and my toothbrush into my toothpaste. Into my suitcase. Uh, but I can't make all of this fit. Maybe I should get rid of these bolt cutters that I don't need? It, like, puts you at the checklist of things, and you're like, click on the thing you don't need, and you click on the bolt cutters, and then you're like, you're right, taking these bolt cutters was stupid, and then you leave them behind. And I felt like I was playing Blue's Clues. No, you... Like, literally, a Blue's Clues audience member could have figured this out. As soon as Rufus fails with the, uh, fails with his escape plan, you end up on one of the, uh, trash dispensing units... And Rufus quickly realizes that, huh, I could have cut that fencing if I had some kind of metal cutting tool. You know what? Forget it. I'm, I'm just okay, going to steal this robot arm. Yes, it, it does come that up again. The exactly writers are good enough to, to, to give that away. There needs to be another callback for that, for that not to be super stupid, so I feel good now. Yeah. One of the problems I do have with the game, though, is Rufus's motivations. Like, so upon failing his escape attempt, he discovers that there's this evil plot going on in the paradise city of Elysium, uh, in which the female uh, love interest protagonist, Goal, has been dumped on Deponia. And Rufus seems to claim some kind what? of entitlement towards Goal, because also he's her name she's there. Yeah, Miss Goal. I don't quite understand the naming. As in, you know, she's an object or an objective, if you will. Yeah, That's I'm, the... I'm kind of iffy about that. D that is super squicky to me. Yes. So what I, is Deponia? Is Deponia a place? Deponia is the name of the trash uh, section of the planet. The same way Elysium is the name of the nice area of the planet. Are there any ponies in Deponia? I think they're meaning like Depo, that kind of thing. Or Depo, however you want to pronounce it. Buca de Pepo Italian restaurant. Ow. Oh. So yeah, it, it's definitely an adventure game. Um, you're going to be running off of adventure game logic the entire time, but that said, the characters in the game are entertaining. The events are fun from like the mentality of Futurama is a fun show. I think if you like the sense of humor of that, you would definitely dig Deponia. Totally. You going to keep playing it? Yeah, I think I'll give it a shot, see if uh, how much further I can get. Uh, it took me like a good 15 minutes to figure out to use the plunger on the wooden door that didn't have a handle. But, uh, I, that's just adventure that game was logic. the exact same <clears throat> puzzle that stopped me up in that initial sequence, and I very quickly got to the same point that I get with most adventure games, uh, which was the adventure game on one monitor and a fac on the other. Yeah. Just going down the list. Click this, click this, go do this, go do this. I will say, I would not have guessed that I need to walk to the front of the house from the back of the house and go steal the mailbox in order to have a place to sit on and put the battery in my escape pod. Uh-huh. Oh, and another one that tripped me up is you already mentioned that you need to use the angry notes to start the fire. And I was at the point where I wanted to start this fire to boil these socks to get them clean. Because I'm like, all right, I figure that these are actually all white socks and they're just so dirty that they're these colors, was my guess. But I have four notes, and one of them is on the refrigerator door on the outside. And I had left the note there and opened the refrigerator... So the refrigerator was sitting open, and I was like, there are no more notes, and what do I do? See, part of me didn't want to go into Tony's room, because I'm like, that's her room. Why would I try to go in there? Clearly she doesn't want me to be in there if the door is shut. Clearly. So I got the other four notes and was like, I don't want to do this. Ugh, you're going to make me do this. 
And when you attempt, you are rewarded with a guillotine that tries to oh, kill yeah. you. It, it's but decent it if you can run with its sense of humor. Stupidity is the only option. Yeah, in Deponia, that's definitely the thing. So yeah, review Fire number related. one complete. Deponia, buy it if it's on sale and you feel you want an adventure game. And have already finished Sam and Max and basically all of the Telltale adventure games. <clears throat> and The Longest Journey. What did we pay for it? Like $10? I paid six ninety nine, I believe. Oh, nice. I'm, I must have paid the same because we bought it at the same time, but then I No, forgot. you already had it. <laughs> oh, you well, already had right. it from somewhere. Uh, I cannot... <clears throat> That is not a thing that I can process into my brain, because... Deponia just appeared in your Steam list. Yes. And now, thanks to us, you've tried it. What I did buy was Don't Starve. Indeed. I'll tell you that this is a game that I'm not going to be playing any more of, because I really, really like it, and could potentially play like 500 hours of it if I did not restrain myself. Awesome. Pixie, I believe you summarized Don't Starve pretty succinctly earlier in the week. Uh, yeah, I, I tweeted about this at Nerd Talk Pixie, and uh, basically, I'm I'm just poking around it. As soon as the thing queues up, I'm like, "Huh, this is like Tim Burton's Minecraft." Yeah, that's it a is. very apt observation. Just the aesthetic of it combined with the you just dropped in nowhere, and I don't know what I'm doing. It is. It does have a little bit more direction, and I'm told it does have more of a wind state. Yes, uh, yeah. there there is actually a. I've a, only been at it for a like maybe ending. a week. It starts you in off game. in a, quote, survival mode. And the objective of survival mode is just kind of to live as long as you can, and indeed to not starve, as suggested by the title. Uh, but somewhere randomly in the survival mode world will be an object called the Portal to Adventure, which will start you out in adventure mode, wherein you have to get through, like, a couple of different levels in order to So basically, find I'm doing it wrong, because I, like, kind of set up camp on the side of the river that I got dropped in, and was just like, I'm just gonna stay here. Well, that's a reasonable strategy if you have, like, a food source and a good way to survive near where you start. Mm. Uh, you, you generally want to tech up to things like luxury axes and tents that you don't have access to until you've gathered a lot of materials and discovered some rare resources. So, the, the way that it is most fundamentally like Minecraft is that the gameplay consists of climbing up a very slow tech tree. Like, you start out with nothing in your inventory, and you can pick up stones off the ground... And you can pick up grass and sticks that are just laying around, and you have to use those to no. build an axe. See, I was fortunate in that, um, where is, like, the map, like, does it load a different map for everybody, or is yes, it all randomized. the same? Okay. See, I was fortunate in that it loaded me into an area where I was, like, right next to a river, and there's, like, some gravestones or whatever, and then scattered just behind the gravestones, there's just gold sitting around. <laughs> That's pretty lucky. On the ground, yeah, like yeah there's, like... Uh, just like a dozen like little lumps of gold just kind of sitting around in the open. I was just like, guess I'll pick these up. Nice. Now, you had it way easier than me. I was like on day eight of my first life before I found my first gold nugget. And I still have yet have to, to find one. <laughs> you have not found a gold nugget? I'm on and like... You have not gotten very far in Dark I'm Star. on like day 25 and I haven't found a gold nugget. Oh my goodness. Right? Have you found the pig village? I did. They I've seen me. it, but I haven't gone in there because I'm terrified something's going to kill me. Yeah, no. I, I, I play excessively cautiously, and Pyro, you know this from our experience in Minecraft. Yep. I did that at first, too, and you kind of have to learn when you're playing a game like this uh, not to be afraid of death and just to sort of try things. Because, like, for my first, uh, like, five days, I was like, pigs are probably hostile. I should avoid them. And they say, like, too close if you get close to them. Uh, but they never actually aggro unless you attack them. They're totally passive. No, I I disagree with you because they definitely go wear pig on you certain nights. Oh, they nights. do go wear pig on full moons. Yeah, which is when I found them. Oh no. Yep. That is very unlucky. And was promptly eaten. Wear pigs are super dangerous. Yes, yes they are. Well, you actually. Uh, one of the ways in which Don't Starve improves on the Minecraft model is the fact that it has persistent progression. So if you got to some full moon day, which is not when you start out, uh, and died, that will have filled up an XP bar that shows up in the ending screen. And that XP bar makes progress towards unlocking additional characters. Yep. Which is kind of neat. One, yes. Like, that is one thing that Minecraft is sorely lacking, is any form of progression between worlds. Because uh, Terraria, actually, Terraria, you can go between worlds, and the environment will be totally different, uh, but your character inventory will be persistent. 
So you can go into a multiplayer world with some other people, and you'll keep your helmet and your pickaxe and all your cool stuff. Uh, whereas Minecraft, you just start from scratch every single time, and you get nothing. Yep. No, the, the don't fir- starve. Correct me if I'm wrong, Due but the first ex- character you unlock seems to be a female character. That is correct. Yay. By which you mean the first one that is unlocked. And in, in addition to the, there's the default character who is male, and then, yeah, you know, the one that you Poor have to go Wilson. out of your way to unlock. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with what you're getting at, Pix. Having the female option off the bat, at least one, might not have been a bad idea. This, again, just reinforces that idea that male is the default, women are the other. That is absolutely true and very disappointing. Uh, but I hope to console you somewhat by indicating that the special power that you get along with the second character named Willow is that she can start fires at will using her mind. And if nightfall happens and you have not made fire, she will just create fire on the ground without any fuel and never get eaten by the Gru. So she's pretty Wow, give she's her the hardcore. best advantage in the game. Never go insane. Well, she still does suffer from insanity, and actually, um, she only starts the fire at her feet after she has been in pitch blackness for a couple of seconds, uh, almost long enough for the Gru to show up. And during that time, your sanity meter drains fairly quickly. So it is still better to make a camp, but at least you don't die instantly if you don't. So yeah, I actually really like that this uses the three meters for staying alive, whereas, like, the uh, Minecraft only uses food and health these days, right? Because food is now a thing in Minecraft. But the only thing food affects in Minecraft is how you regenerate. Right. And, uh... Starvation actually will have the same effect, or a similar effect, to it doesn't ha- to it has in Don't Starve in Minecraft, which is that your health will drain uh, when your hunger is at zero in Minecraft. Right. In Don't Starve, you just drop dead, right? Uh, incorrect. Actually, you just lose HP. All right. And you lose HP down to the point where you do drop dead. Minecraft tears it by difficulty, and on the normal difficulty, uh, your health will only go down to three hearts, at which point it will stop draining from hunger. On hardcore, it drains to, well, okay, the hardest one, it drains to zero. There's one at which it drains to three, and one at which it drains to one half. Uh, But in Don't Starve, hunger will always eventually kill you, because, I mean, hey, it's right in the name. You can't turn back on that. Don't Starve is really a perfect game for people who find RPG mechanics compelling, because it is just all tech tree ascension and character progression, sort of outside of the realm of player skill progression, although I guess player skill is a significant part of it. You're discovering things like uh, pigs are not hostile except on full moons, and if you give meat to the pig king, the pig king will give you gold, and you can kite enemies. Like, the combat system is actually kind of interesting, uh, which is that it's based on animation priority, and all enemies will go into an attack animation and only do damage to you if you are close enough to them when their animation finishes. Uh, So... That generally means that you can run away from anything, because a spider will come up to you and try and do a bite, but it'll be stuck in place while it's doing that bite. Um, And what you can do is just attack faster than most enemies, and so a spider will start its bite animation, and then you punch it, and that will knock it out of its animation. So it will then try and start again, and you interrupt it again, and you're safe. Um, unless you're fighting more than one spider at a time, in which case you can't interrupt all their attack animations. So, if and I may interrupt, this you're you're basically describing to me what would be called total BS in a fighting game. Yep. <laughs> if yeah, it didn't interrupt. It is 100% imbalanced in your favor and sucks for the enemies, uh, if your timing is good. But in a but game where everything But, you know, they're computers, so whatever. Valid. The computers can suck it, and we don't need to be fair to them. No, I'm completely in agreement with Pyro here. This is the thing. So if you're in a situation with multiple spiders, uh, then what you just try and do is you run around in circles until they get kind of a small distance away from each other, in which case you run up to one, that one will start its attack animation, you interrupt it, and then leave uh, before the second one shows up and they start to gang up on you. So that that is player skill progression, but the hours and hours of the game are, okay, I started with nothing, now I have an axe, now I have a pickaxe. Uh, I use the pickaxe to mine this gold vein, and I use the gold to build a science machine, and I use the science machine to invent a shovel, and I use the shovel to move all these saplings into one place so that I can get a bunch of sticks, and then I used all these sticks to build a tent, and now I can sleep through the night. I used all these sticks to build a sword so I can fight the hounds that spawn on day eight. And so, 
it is very, very RPG, and I, I really like that kind of mechanics. Because it's, it's the satisfaction of knowing that you have made things better. Like, a thing that was very hard before, uh, like simply having enough food, becomes very easy by getting so far up the tech tree that you have fertilizer and shovels, and you've moved a bunch of berry bushes into a cluster. And it's like, okay, I was really struggling with this problem before, but now it is no problem for me. And, and that is just a primal satisfaction in my brain that could make me devote 30 hours to this. Yeah, I so, didn't play terribly long, so I ain't got a whole much... I ain't got a whole bunch to say about it. I mean, overall, what are you thinking you're more likely to spend time playing? Minecraft or Don't Starve? Because Minecraft has more open building. Like, you can construct a castle of your choosing in Minecraft. Well, the idea that, you know, Minecraft <clears throat> is kind of, you know... Not necessarily, Minecraft. but I, I would I would say by necessity multiplayer. But. Right. Oh, I, I would describe Minecraft as a building game, and definitely describe Don't Starve as a survival game. Like there's no. Yeah, that makes sense. Here. I am likely to consume the tech tree ascension parts of Minecraft, um, wherein I have an iron axe and then I have a diamond axe and things have improved because of this. I am not likely to spend a lot of time on the art aspect, uh, where people make these giant voxel models of, like, Grand Prix race cars, uh, cause I, I, my brain s does not see through the fact that the tasks that are getting easier in Don't Starve are, like, totally non-real, like, this hunger is not a real problem that is getting easier for me, um, but my mind can see through the fact that if I am building voxel models, Minecraft is just a bad tool set for that. Like, ah. if I wanted to build voxel models, I should probably be doing it in, like, Alias Maya, which is now Autodesk Maya. But yeah, like, there are better tools I could be used to doing this, that I could use to do this more efficiently and get my end product faster if I just wanted to make art. All right, then. So that's two reviews done this week. Woo, still going strong. Ready for number three? Number three? Number three. Oh my goodness. Number three. Make We're also trick. We're also reviewing Poker Night at the Inventory 2. Oh by Telltale goodness, Games. This? I did. I've been playing it for I know days. a little bit about this, but I have no idea how to play poker, so I didn't get this. Okay, I so... I am pumped about the fact that you are, you played this because I was excited about the fact that Tycho was in the first game. So did you play the first one? I did not play the first one. Okay. So, this time, our cast is Brock Sampson from The Venture Brothers, Claptrap from Borderlands, Ash Williams from the Evil Dead slash Army of Darkness series, and Sam from Sam and Max. This is that, an even more bo bonkers set of characters than the first game. I haven't gotten to the best part. Our dealer is GLaDOS from Portal. Now, all these characters are voiced by their actual voice actors, except for Ash is not Bruce Campbell. Yes, Bruce but. Campbell was not available, so they got an adequate voice actor who does a really nice job. Um, likewise, Moxie is in the game as the bartender. Nice. Um, Claptrap brought, uh, brought his friend Steve the Psycho, who is hanging out just off camera. <laughs> and please, please tell me that Steve the Psycho is never shown. Oh no, he shoots uh, Claptrap's cards out of his hands and is around when Claptrap shows up. Like, he's just chilling nice. right off camera. Um, and Max is hanging out at the booth right behind the poker table. So, all of these characters are still in the game. So like, I get them mixed up. Of Sam and Max, which one is the dog and which one is the Lagomorph? Sam is the dog, uh, Max is the rabbit thing. Okay. And but they're both it there. It used to be the rabbit in the previous game and now it's the dog? Yep. They, they switched off because they realized that Max kept losing their money. They actually discussed that one. Nice. So yeah, um, you're probably wondering why on earth would you play poker in a situation where you cannot actually win any money playing poker? Because that's all this is. This is a poker game. That is the game you are playing. There's no, like, weird twisted rules. There's no, like, extra card bonus rounds or anything like that. No, it it's poker. It's either Texas Hold'em or the Omaha variant. Those are the two games you can play in this. I didn't even know Omaha was a, a variant of poker. I'd only ever heard of Texas Hold'em. Same here. Okay, so that that's all it is. You can't win money playing this game. That, that's just not going to happen. But what you can do is use the in-game money that you're earning to buy unlockables for other games. For example, um, one of the prizes is a like an Aperture Science turret as a headpiece for zero 
in Borderlands 2. Likewise, there's also a skin that goes with it. Uh, when you combine the two, it looks amazing. I'm actually less curious about the fact that there is no real money involved in this as to how they can simulate poker uh, without the mechanism of you going bankrupt. Uh, because in real poker, if you didn't have the point where you just don't get to play anymore, then there's the betting strategy of playing something with, you know, evenish odds or even bad odds and just doubling your bet every time. And at some point, if you don't go bankrupt, uh, you will turn out hugely positive on this. And in real life, at some point you go bankrupt. But in this game, I would hope that they don't make you stop playing your video game. So how does that work? They do, actually. You, If you lose all of your money, everyone starts in with uh, $20,000. Uh, when you're out of money, you are knocked out of that tournament. So and, what, do you just start over, or how does this work from a game perspective? Uh, in the game, when you are out of money, you have the option of continuing to watch the tournament to see how it ends. At, at which point, all of the characters are still making commentary with each other. There, there's a good amount of dialogue between each character. Um, and then once the round ends, you can uh, choose to play another game, at which point the game generates another $20,000 for you. But it does keep track of your totals. And you can go negative as far as currency for buying the, uh, the unlockables goes. So, so when you buy into a tournament after you've lost the previous tournament, it just puts your life savings to negative 20,000 or negative the buy-in? Yeah, negative 20,000. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. So you just have an infinite line of credit. Yeah, the the house doesn't care. They'll, they'll just keep handing you 20,000. Admitted, each poker tournament is worth a million dollars. Or sorry, uh, $100,000. Math. <laughs> yeah, so getting your money back up, like, I, I had lost four tournaments and then won one, and I'm back to neutral. I'm okay. sorry, back to, yeah, back to neutral in my current tournament that I'm playing in. But yeah, all, the game doesn't want to punish you as in you can't play because you're out of money, but at the same time, if you lose all your money for a tournament, the game's going to have you get knocked out. It's not handing you the game. There's no easy mode here. The closest thing you've got to, like, an easy mode is that each of the characters has tells that you can pick up on. Uh, for instance, Brock swears when he's bluffing, or when his cards are bad. Like, it becomes obvious when he gets a crappy hand. Um, Claptrap starts telling worse jokes when he's <laughs> bluffing. So what you're saying is that it's impossible to discern Claptrap's tell. No, he gets he gets more talkative when he has bad cards. He gets much more talkative, and he, uh, and he starts uh, betting more and more. Okay. Uh, it makes sense that Claptrap does the opposite of what would be rational behavior. Uh-huh. I know that you can make uh, the other characters exaggerate their tells by buying them alcohol with your money. Yes. You. Well, there's another system of money that are uh, tokens that you earn in-game for playing tournaments. Uh, I believe it's regardless of win or loss you earn these things. And you can use those to buy uh, new table felt, new chips, new playing card decks... And by spending five of these, you can have Moxie bring a character a drink. Does this work on Claptrap? It does. He has a port, apparently. <laughs> An alcohol port? Yep. Emergency induction port. Seems legit. But yes, for, for the $5 that they're charging for this game, basically you're getting Borderlands 2 and Team Fortress 2 unlockables over time. And... You get really funny dialogue delivered by the characters. It's a joy to see all of these characters interacting. Just having GLaDOS ripping on everyone at the poker table is funny. It is so funny to hear her going at people. You know, the, there's this great comment that she makes when you do something that's counterintuitive. It's like, I've searched the databases of every poker game ever recorded in the 20th century, and your strategy doesn't match any of them. On a positive note, you're a pioneer. Yeah, it's innovative. That's like that's like a real benefit in this type of game, where people might be trying to predict your actions. Right. The game um, makes sure it calls you out when you're doing things that don't make sense. How are the poker fundamentals? Uh, Is it very, a good poker game? Very solid. It's a very good game. Um, it it plays fairly. Um, characters react how you would expect a poker player to, with the exception of Claptrap. Um, and it's just a very enjoyable game to play. Like as far as teaching someone poker, this could totally be a, totally be a good way to learn the game. Is there, like, a win state where you can have overall sort of achieved the game? Is that just unlocking all the unlockables? That, that's unlocking everything, I believe. Oh, and uh, collecting everyone's, uh, what do they call them? They're basically everyone's treasure, everyone's bounty. That's what it is. Um, so 
there, the game sets forth three objectives that you complete in a single game. So my three were uh, win a duel, in other words, me against just another player, in which you win with uh, three of a kind or better, so a high hand, just win a duel, and then uh, steal a take, or steal, uh, steal a blind. So basically so Chivos. Yeah, they're, they're little achievements that you do during a poker session, and then the next game that you play after that, um, one of the characters will put a signature item on the table. So Ash puts down the Necronomicon, uh, Brock puts down the orb, uh, Sam puts down his banjo, I forget what, what on earth Claptrap puts down, something insane. But each it of the can't have been that insane or you would remember you would it. I haven't seen what he puts down yet. Man, if I was if I was winning a prized possession of Sam's, I'd much rather win the big pistol. I and mean, the banjo is all right. But the big gun is like the first thing you see in the first Sam and Max. Right. So yeah, th um, this more than anything has made me actually want to play the Sam and Max games. They're pretty good. I, I've heard so. Are these achievements? Uh, well, does the game have Steam achievements? Yes, definitely. Nice. There are ones specifically related to playing the game with certain. Uh, Certain felts and cards on the table, winning certain games, uh, earning so much money. Like, it's all, it's all very solid, very standard. For $5, you really can't complain about the game. Like, it, I feel that I have gotten a very funny poker simulator that involves some characters that I really love. The name for the achievement for winning Claptrap's bounty item is Trophy Wife. I don't have a guess what that means. It's a little stupid gold statue thing of, uh, of Moxie, I think. I see. Apparently, you can also win a bounty off Glados. Yeah, that is Glados the personality will put... core. Yep, Glados will put in a bounty. How much did you pay for this? It's five dollars on Steam. Five dollars. Can hardly it, go wrong. It is yeah. five dollars on, uh, well, whatever platform you get it on. Yep, it's yeah, also available on Xbox Live. That it is five dollars on, or that it is ten dollars on XBLA. I uh, thought I'd seen otherwise, but let me see. Also, there is a problem if you pick up the PS3 version of it, in that the Fine people at the PlayStation Network don't like the idea of giving away free content for their games. So as for the they seriously with don't. Um, you couldn't get the uh, as I recall, you couldn't get the extra like perks from the Mass Effect Three multiplayer from those challenges that they used to yeah, do on the weekends. And likewise, you can't get the unlockables for uh, for uh, Borderlands Two and Team Fortress Two for playing this if you are playing the PS3 version of the game, which is silly. Basically, the PS3 version is a bunch of BS. Yes, and you should only pick up the PS3 version if you if that's your only option and you just want to see the interactions between these characters. Because admit it, the, the interactions are funny. I, I utterly love having GLaDOS ripping on Brock Sampson and Brock in the situation where he can't do anything about it. Uh, okay, do you want me to spoil what Claptrap's thing is? Go ahead. Yes. Congratulations, you've won Claptrap's 2012 Spike VGA Award! <laughs> oh yeah, he did win one of those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, uh, so far I have only won the banjo, but winning the banjo unlocked the Lagomorph skin for the Mecromancer in Borderlands. That sounds pretty cool. Yep, so now Gage can wear the Lagomorph hat. Crazy ears. Yep. I wonder if that makes her headshot hitbox larger. I, I don't know. Probably player characters have, like, only one hitbox in Borderlands because there's no competitive multiplayer. Yeah. It's all cooperative, so. so I don't see why that would be a thing. Yeah, I don't think headshots really apply to characters. and loose with that. Yeah. So yeah, that's review number three. We did it. Woo! Indeed. PC Gaming Blowout. Triple threat. <sighs> I hate this connection. It's awful. Yep. So have you pre-ordered pre Fez? I have not. I really don't believe in pre-ordering things I can get on Steam. Especially when they're not giving any discount whatsoever for pre-ordering it. They're not... I'm sure nope. I saw one. I don't believe it. I might be proven wrong I here. I could be wrong. But likewise, what I did see just went up for pre-order. Um, Shadowrun Returns. Zong. So yes, this is a top-down, old-school RPG that is going to be available on Steam and for iDevices. Coming soon. Totally can't wait for this. Nice. Oh, man. You know what else got announced uh, is available for pre-order now? Let's hear it. What's that? Remember me! So pumped! Games don't Hell get yeah. female protagonists. What? Female protagonists with short dark hair that I can also cosplay! Woo! Woo so dude, pumped. Cosplay possibility. Dude, dude, so pumped. We need to make this happen. Capcom. Remember me as a Capcom joint. It is. That's super weird. 
I remember they were having some problems getting this published because uh, whoever they first went to was like, yeah, we don't want you to have a female lead because that won't sell. Uh huh. Because so, yeah. Tomb Raider is not a thing. So, yeah. Uh, Remember Me is now available. Uh, it's $49.99 if you pre purchase on Steam. Uh, pre purchase offer includes three exclusive fighting moves. I don't know about the consoles having any bonuses, but maybe. There was a movie called Remember Me that starred Robert Pattinson? Yes, it's a rom com. Wait, he's capable of comedy? Oh no. Or, I don't know. I assume it's a <laughs> rom com. It might just be like dramatic staring and it, that's supposed <laughs> to be romantic. <laughs> Inadvertent comedy? <laughs> Basically. I, I assumed it was a comedy. Maybe I wasn't supposed to be laughing. Folks, this is a tromedy. <laughs> But yeah, I'm super pumped about Remember Me because it's basically like, it looks like a spiritual successor for Beyond Good and Evil, kind of. Like lots of running around and sci-fi yeah. dystopian future. And I, I actually do have, now that I think about it, one complaint about Poker Night. What's Sorry to go back to this. There's no multiplayer. And no multiplayer is probably don't starve's biggest weakness as well. Mm -hmm. that, that is the one thing that would put Minecraft over it, in my opinion. Likewise, Deponia doesn't have any multiplayer. I mean... The pony is one where multiplayer just cannot conceivably be integrated with those mechanics in any way. Yeah. But it doesn't have it, and I'm gonna complain about that. Well, sure. That None just makes you a tool. None of have any multiplayer whatsoever. <laughs> like, like, multiplayer in Poker Night and Don't Star yeah. is, like, completely Poker obvious. is multiplayer by necessity, so right. that's kind of dumb. But You know, I would be completely okay with replacing one of the four computer-controlled characters with a friend, so that yeah, we can play poker together. And not have to give up real money. Or banana chips, as it were. Hey, don't diss the banana chips. <laughs> banana chips may also suffer from the no bankruptcy fault. Indeed. So that was actually a lot of stuff to announce if we're looking into the future here. But, Did you guys um, realize Remember Me comes out June out? 3rd. So pumped. Nice. Did you guys realize there's a Deadpool game coming out? Yes. Uh, I yeah. actually... We, we made this announcement on the Tequila DJ show a few weeks ago like a month oh, ago. Oh, you're right. You did. We did. That it's got the same voice the actor from NBC3. Uh, I guess it's got a release date now? Yeah, the the news, the reason that I was looking at it is that there was a release date announced. June 25th. Yay, release date. So there's like no way in hell I could possibly get the uh, Remember Me costume done by its release, but, you know, maybe Gen Con, maybe. I'm not Working promising anything. Planning stages. Well, I don't know. Designing robotic arms. Kind of difficult. I figured it was just going to be plastic. <laughs> Come on. Real functional robotic arms. If you can't ram it into the back of someone's faster. skull and delete their brains, what's the point? Well, I just want to be able to wear it to the con. I'm pretty sure they have a no ramming fist into the back of someone's skull and deleting their memories clause. <sighs> Ruin all of my fun. Yeah, just deleting their memories is hard, but if you just want me to delete their brains, I think we could probably work this out. Yeah, I mean, you could, do that with, hardware store. you could do that with a melon baller. <laughs> Alright, so, on to next subjects. Um, plans for reviews for next week? I know you two have finals coming up. We do. So, I'm guessing I'm on my own for this one. Pretty much. Okay, um, next week, the PC Gaming Marathon continues because I don't want to have to book up either of my consoles again. <laughs> um, we're going to be taking a look at... Probably Kerbal Space Program? Maybe? Ooh. Possibly? That's exciting. Yep. And um, I'm going to be in finals week, so trying to play any video games in that time is going to be basically impossible. So next week, Sen carries the show. Put me in your backpack. Woo! Pretend that we're playing League. So yeah, that's a thing. Also, maybe Fez, if I have time. Because, you know, that's going to be unlocked in 16 hours. Also, by the time you're how... listening to this, it will already be unlocked. Actually, maybe not. No, it won't. Sen, full of lies. how dedicated you are to not hooking up your consoles again, uh, you may be in good shape because there's actually another thing we have coming up in the future. Herp. The next Xbox announcement. Oh, There's I... a press conference. There's a press release. There's going to be a conference on May 21st. Uh, but you have to hook up your Xbox for that. Uh, or go to Xbox.com, I guess. Or visit any number of sites who are assuredly rebroadcasting it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's going to be a thing. This one was much more naked in the press release as to what they were actually intending, as the Sony event was all coy, and it's like, hey, 
we're gonna, uh, we're gonna be, be announcing, announcing you know, you know some things. things. They're PlayStation, PlayStation related. Maybe, maybe it's maybe it's a new Monster Hunter, Hunter game for the Vita. We're not, we're not really being, being very specific. specific. We're just we're saying, saying we're announcing something PlayStation related. related. Yeah, but everybody knew. Everybody guessed and was right. But this, but this one, one, they're like, hey, uh, we're, we're announcing, announcing the next Xbox, Xbox so if you could show up, that'd be great. great. Thanks. The, the cat, cat is out of the bag on that one. Sure. I don't know why they didn't wait until E3 for this. Yeah, it's like. Okay, I guess... What, like, uh, if you guys are all going to blow your load this early, what are you going to be doing in June? Or July, I can't remember. In C3. I guess dominating the press is, like, this careful dance, because if you wait until E3... Yeah, it is June. I was right. ...for coverage with other things. Uh, but on the other hand, if you're announcing the next Xbox, you can probably compete pretty well and dominate the more eyeballs that will be following game coverage pretty effectively. Uh, I, I think... Waiting till E3 probably would have been a better guess because, I mean, the next Xbox will dominate a news cycle pretty effectively. Even an E3 news cycle. They didn't agree with us, apparently. Punks. All right, then. I am excited. Yeah. Uh, All right, Sen. I'll look into it, but I'm not going to, like, try not to wet myself. <laughs> I put toilets are four. We don't need diapers between the ages of, like, four and... All right, so does that wrap it up for tonight? I think we are I'm complete. done here. All right, so next week, Sen plays more PC games. Pixie is finals at university. Pyro graduates from university. So there's that. I'm out of here. Uh, all this and more next week on Nerd Talk. In the meantime, I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Pyro Sam. And you've been listening to Nerd Talk.